Alrighty, so we're going to get started. I'm muting everybody. And uh, so you're going to want your two blocks, a strap, your mat, a blanket in case you need some support for your knees. We are going to be doing a couple of kneeling sequences. But as always, we'll start with our warm up stretches. It's always super important to get into your warm up stretches because you never want to just like jump right into those intense postures, right? We want to do it when we're nice and warm. So let's be mindful of which heel is in front of the other. Let's start with your right heel closest in toward your groin and your left heel out in front of it. You're going to zip your belly button in tight towards your spine, roll the shoulder blades back, crown of the head toward the ceiling, and we'll start with the neck. Take your right hand to the left side of your head. Carefully bring your right ear to your right shoulder, feeling the stretch in the opposite side. You can stay here or walk your left fingertips out for that added stretch. Big inhale through your nose. Exhale out through your nose. Inhale, fill up. As you exhale, drop your chin towards your collarbone. Look down to the right knee. Walk the left fingertips away. Inhale, fill up. Exhale out. One more inhale. As you exhale, drop your chin to your chest and just make some slow half circles, feeling the stretch in the back of your neck here. The closer you bring your chin to your chest, the more of a stretch you will feel in the back of the neck area. Good, and then when you're ready, sitting up nice and tall, still keeping that right heel in towards your groin. You're gonna zip the belly button up nice and tight, take an inhale, lift up all the way, palms meet at the top. Exhale, big press up. Good. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Last time, inhale, lift up as high as you can. On the exhale, start to twist your body to the right. Right hand lowers down like a kickstand. Left hand to the outside of the right leg, getting that nice spine twist here. Inhale, sit up nice and tall. Exhale, twist. So twisting is really great for digestion. If you get a crack or a pop, those are good cracks and pops. One more inhale. Exhale out all the way, and then inhale, come on back up to neutral, and exhale, let it go. You're going to drop your right arm down, left arm reaches all the way up and over, finding your side body stretch. We'll get to the other side after this sequence. Make sure you have a soft bend in that right elbow here. Inhale, fill up. Exhale, sink a little deeper. One more time, inhale. Exhale out all the way, and then inhale, sit back up. Arms come out into a T-shape. We're going to go for that eagle wrap. It's been a little while. Right arm wraps underneath the left, cross at the elbows. Start by hugging opposite shoulders. If that is enough of a shoulder stretch for you, absolutely stay. If you want more, you can release the hands, take your right fingers around the left wrist. So we're here in this kind of twisted eagle wrap. If it feels awkward, you're doing it right. Inhale, lift the elbows up. Exhale, push your elbows out. Inhale, lift. Exhale, press. Last time, inhale. Exhale, press out all the way, hold it here as you inhale again, and then exhale, let it go. So one side should feel pretty loosey-goosey now. Let's see how the other side feels. So release the cross of your legs. You should have had your right heel in towards your groin. Now we're going to go left heel in toward the groin, right heel out in front of it. So I don't know about you at home, but if you notice, my right knee flies like way up in the air because my right hip is naturally a little bit tighter than my left. So what I'm going to do is give myself a little bit of support so that my leg doesn't strain too much. Feel free to do the same if that makes you more comfortable. Re-zip your belly button in nice and tight toward the spine, and then we're going to start with the neck. Take your left hand to the right side of your head. Carefully bring your left ear to your left shoulder, and then just walk the right fingertips away. So switching across of our legs doesn't really mean anything, um, you know, anatomy speaking, except for that we're just making sure that we balance out both sides, right? If we continuously try, you know, use our favorite side, we lock up on the other one. So it's really important just to balance out, and you'll notice. Drop your chin towards your chest, look down to the left knee, walk the right fingertips away. You'll notice that by the end of class, after we do both sides, that you will be pretty even. One more inhale, and then exhale. Drop your chin to your chest, interlace your fingers behind your head, round your upper body all the way forward. Point your elbows toward the ground. Have that really deep round in the upper back. When your next inhale comes, gaze will lift up past your screen toward the ceiling, arch the spine, cow pose, and then exhale, round back forward for cat. Inhale, open up, arch the spine, cow pose. Exhale, round for cat. Two more. Inhale, we're opening up the chest, clearing out the airway. Exhale, rounding back forward. Last time, inhale, and then exhale, let it go. 
Sitting up nice and tall, you're going to inhale, lift up all the way, palms meet at the top. Exhale, big press out. Again, inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Last time, inhale, lift up all the way. As you exhale, twist again to the left this time. Left hand behind like a kickstand, right hand to the outside of the left leg. Inhale, sit up nice and tall. Exhale, twist the torso. Again, inhale, sit up. Exhale, twist. Last time, inhale. Exhale, twist out all the way. Come on back up to neutral as you inhale. Exhale, let it go. Left hand drops down, right arm reaches all the way up and over. Have that soft little bend in your left elbow here. If we stay stiff as a board, your joints are going to get stiff as a board. So we want our muscles to be taking the impact here, not our joints, especially the elbow. And then inhale, sit back up. So come on into that T-shape again. Eagle wrap on the other side. Left arm hooks underneath the right. Start by hugging opposite shoulders, or you can release the hands. Take your left fingers now around the right wrist. It should feel awkward. Line the elbows up with the shoulders. Belly button zips in tight. Inhale, lift the elbows up. Exhale, push your elbows out. Inhale, lift. Exhale, press. Last time, inhale. Exhale, press out all the way. Hold it here as you inhale again. And then exhale, let it go. Shake it off. Grab your strap. Just going to do a couple more upper body poses. So right away, I know that since that's not my dominant side, this leg gets really stiff and tired. So I'm going to make an adjustment here. Feel free to do the same. Grip comes nice and wide to start. Arms stay stick straight, and you're going to take your pass-throughs. If you feel like you kind of get wobbly and bent, all bent up here, make your grip a little bit wider. If going back creates a lot of stress and tension in the upper back, just go up overhead and then back down. No need to overdo it. We will have plenty of time to get the shoulders ready for uh, putting on a winter coat sooner or later. Let's go for three more. And the opposite kind of speaks for itself too, right? If you're doing this and you're like, yeah, whatever, make your grip shorter to give yourselves an extra challenge. So always options to modify or to advance really in anything you do. After your last one, grip will come Back down, you're going to make your grip now a little bit shorter, about as wide as your knees. Arms come up into the letter V shape, and then you're going to bend your elbows into a goal post shape. So in your goal post shape, we're really form specific. We want shoulders and elbows in one straight line, and then wrists directly above the elbows. From there, you're going to puff your chest out, draw the elbows back. If I were to come to your homes and place like a piece of chalk in between your shoulder blades, it should not move because they're super active there. I hope you're even kissing each other. Shaking here is okay, but holding your breath is not. We're here for five, four, three, two, and one. Let that go. Give it a shake. You can toss your strap off to the side, your blocks too, and then we're going to make our way into a tabletop position. So in your tabletop position, all ten fingers pointing forward, wrists below the shoulders, belly button in tight, spine is flat, hips above the knees, tuck your toes, Inhale, drop the belly, lift the hips, look up to the ceiling, cow pose. And then exhale, push your hips forward, look behind you for cat. So move through your own pace of cat and cow for the next few moments. This is a point where you really want to start to exaggerate that movement. In your cow pose, you should feel a deep stretch in the abdominals and like your lower vertebrae are kissing each other. And then in your cat pose, you should almost feel like a little bit of a tremble in your abdominals, like you're halfway through a crunch and a lot of space happening between the vertebrae. Let's go for one more round. Inhale, cow, and then exhale, cat. Come on back to neutral. So from here, I want you to point all 10 fingers towards your knees. If this is too intense, you'll know right away, and if it's too intense, just decrease the angle. It can be facing off to the outsides of your mat. And then from here, you're just gonna make some hip circles. And you'll notice at certain points of your circle, the wrist stretch intensifies as well, so we've got a little bit of double action going on. You're opening up the hip joints as well. Maybe you get a crack or a pop. Those are good cracks and pops. After your next rotation, move the opposite way. You have the opportunity to adjust the depth or decrease the depth of your wrist stretch as well. Let's go one more round. And then come on back to a flat back. Fingertips point forward. Let's make our way to downward facing dog. Tuck your right toes back, tuck your left toes back, set up plank pose. From your plank, hips come up and back, downward facing dog. 
So first downward facing dog of the day, no pressure for it to be your most perfect one. Absolutely have a soft bend in the knees if your hamstrings are saying hello to you. But most importantly here, I think is your neck. You never wanna be looking forward toward your hands. That's gonna really strain your neck. Ideally, you are looking at your belly button, but if looking at your belly button is too much, look between your feet. That's gonna line your head up with your neck and with your upper back, so there's no strain in the neck here. So if you're ever in downward facing dog and you have neck pain, your first uh, little body check is to make sure that your gaze is proper. If your gaze is forward, that's gonna kill your neck. Take one more inhale here. As you exhale, bend your knees. Now it's okay to look forward. Walk your feet up to your hands. Bring your hands to your shins, flatten out your back, and then lower back down. Use your inhale to slowly roll up one vertebrae at a time, and exhale at the top. So moving through a couple of sun breaths here, inhale, reach up all the way, palms meet at the top, and then exhale, dive out with a flat back. Inhale, hands to shins, flatten out the back, and then exhale, lower down. Inhale, carefully roll up one vertebrae at a time, exhale at the top, two more. Inhale, lift, and then exhale, lower. Inhale, hands to shins, flatten out the back. As you exhale, lower down, and this time hold on to opposite elbows here in Ragdoll. So same idea with the neck, we wanna keep it safe, right? Bring your head in between your arms, actually frame it. If this is really tense on the lower back or you feel too much of a hamstring stretch, bend your knees, same idea as downward facing dog. Nod your head, yes. Shake it, no. Gently sway side to side. Wrap your hands around your waist. Use your next inhale to roll back up to stand. Great. Come to the top of your mat, moving through our first sun salutation. So I'm gonna demonstrate a modified version to begin with. You feel free to do whichever variation you'd like. Skip it completely, whatever works. When you're ready, big inhale, reach up all the way. And then exhale, lower down. Inhale, hands to shins, flatten out the back. As you exhale, plant the hands, step back to your plank. From your plank, drop the knees down, fingertips point forward, shift your head past your hands, hug the elbows in nice and tight, take an inhale. As you exhale, lower down to the bottom of that tricep push-up, hug the elbows in. When you inhale, you're going to peel the chest open, baby cobra pose. So my entire torso hips are on the ground. And then as I exhale, I'm pushing my body away, hips over the knees, curl the toes, downward dog. Second downward dog of the day, absolutely bend your knees if you need to, but let's start to make some adjustments here and get more symmetrical. So in a perfect downward dog, your wrists, elbows, shoulders, and hips are in one straight line. To get there, I want you to bend your knees very dramatically, rest your belly on your thighs, stick your butt up, push your chest towards your thighs. What you should feel is your shoulders lifting and your spine sinking, and that's one step closer to that symmetrical shape we want to create. When you feel stable here, don't move the upper back, but maybe remove your belly from your thighs just a little bit. And that doesn't mean you have to ditch the bend in your knees. Take two more breaths here. You should feel a really deep upper back stretch. And as always, gaze is between the feet. One more inhale. Exhale out all the way, bend your knees. This time, walk your hands back towards your feet so you end up at the back of your mat in forward fold. Inhale, press your hands into your shins, flatten out the back. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, carefully roll up one vertebrae at a time. We're gonna come down one more time, so this time I'll demonstrate the traditional version. Inhale, reach up, and exhale, lower down. Inhale, hands to shins, flatten out the back. This time, since we're at the back of the mat, you're going to bend your knees a little bit. Walk your hands forward to your plank pose. Now, you have the option to modify, move with me, or come straight to downward dog. If you're with me, take an inhale, shift your chest past your hands, hug the elbows in. You're going to lower down as slow as possible to the bottom of your push-up. This is called chaturanga. Maybe hover for a moment. Release it. Inhale. Upward facing dog. So just the tops of the feet and the hands are on the mat. Deep back bend. And then exhale, roll over all ten toes, downward facing dog. And just hold your dog pose here. Maybe making that adjustment again that we did before by bending the knees, resting the belly on the thighs, 
lifting the hips up, keeping that connection, and then pushing your chest towards your thighs. Maybe even the crown of your head touches the ground. And then slowly just start to remove that connection between the belly and the thighs. Feel the shoulders lift and the spine sink. One more inhale. Exhale out all the way, bend your knees, look forward, inhale, walk your feet up to your hands, hands to shins, flatten out the back, and then exhale, lower down. Inhale, carefully roll up one vertebrae at a time, and exhale at the top. So, if you have sensitive knees and you usually use a cushion for your knees, now's a good time to put it in the middle of your mat, make sure it's there, we'll need it. And we're going to make our way into low lunge. So, right foot will stay forward. And then your left leg, I'm going to move this way, right leg will stay forward and your left leg is going to take a big step back. First we're starting off in high lunge to set it up and then you're going to drop the knee down. So take a look at your right knee. We want the ankle and the knee stacked on top of each other. Untuck your left toes and then you're just gently going to shift your body weight forward. So you should feel a little bit of a pinch in the right hip, a lot of length in the left. And then inhale, lift the arms up. So you don't want to stick your butt out. You want to drop your tailbone down to the ground. That means you should have like a nice straight line from the crown of your head through your torso down to the tailbone. From here, we're going to take a twist. You're going to take your right hand to the outside of your right hip. Reach your left fingertips all the way up and over. Create that nice big space in your side body. Then take your left elbow to the outside of your right thigh. Keep shifting your body weight forward so we're not losing that hip stretch. Now hands come into a prayer position and you're going to push into that left elbow and your thumbs ideally come right in the middle of your sternum here. Maybe you got a crack or a pop. It's a big shoulder, big chest opener. You'll be able to see from the other side for my uh, twist here. Take one more inhale. And then exhale, let it go. Hands frame the front foot. So we're going to make our way into warrior one. Your warrior one feet are different than your warrior two feet in that you have a heel to uh, heel alignment here. You're going to tuck your toes into the mat, come on off your left knee. Now you're going to spin that left heel down. Now take a look at your feet. We want heel to heel. Come on up onto your fingertips. And then you're going to inhale, lift up, warrior one. So warrior one's a really big hip stretch here. I personally find it a little bit more challenging than warrior two. We're kind of narrowing out the hips here. One more inhale, fill up. Exhale, wrap your hands around your waist, give it a squeeze. And then inhale, big step up to the top of your mat. So you're going to want your blocks. We're moving into pyramid pose from here, still on the right side. So I'm just going to switch my grip for you. You stay as you are. We're going to stand hips distance at the top of your mat. And as always, hips distance is two fists in between your feet. So find that alignment and then drop your blocks to the pinky toe edges of your feet. So we want to stretch out the right hamstring first. That was the side we were working. So you're going to keep your right foot toward the top of your mat. And your left foot is going to take about a 12 to 18 inch step back, but I want it directly behind your block. Because if you had it directly behind your right leg, we'd get all wobbly. So we're going to hold it here. Good. You're going to wrap your hands around your waist, give it a squeeze. Roll the shoulder blades all the way up and back. Take an inhale. As you exhale with a nice flat back, you're going to fold forward, bring your hands to your blocks. So, if you cannot comfortably reach the blocks, not a problem. Interlace your fingers above the thigh, you'll get that exact same hamstring stretch on the right side. So a little form check. If you have to bend your knee to be in this pose, absolutely place your hands on your thighs. Doesn't make you a bad person, just means you have tight hamstrings. One more final adjustment. We want the hips to be squared off, so squeeze your thighs, magnetically draw them together, like there's a piece of paper in between them that you don't want to move. From here, we're going to move into a little balance, warrior three. So if you need to, have a soft bend in your knees, and then I want you to walk your blocks about a foot forward. Your belly should now rest on your thighs. So, not yet, but what we're going to do is end up launching onto the right foot into a balance here. Take an inhale. As you exhale, shift your body weight forward. Definitely press all your body weight into the blocks, and your left leg lifts off the floor. 
So I have a wall behind me, which isn't cheating, but it's going to help me just kind of find my alignment at first. So if you've got a wall or support, use it. Same idea as before, magnetically draw your thighs together as if there's a piece of paper in between them. That's going to keep the hips squared off. We want the hips squared to the floor for this one. Hold for two more breaths. Pick a spot that's not moving. Stare at it. One more inhale. And then exhale out all the way. Gently tap that left foot back down. Walk the blocks back. And then inhale to safely lift back up and shake that off. So, like we spoke about earlier, right, when we do one side, you might start to feel a little lopsided. So this right side should feel pretty loose. Now we're going to get to the left side. So you stay as you are. I'm just going to switch my view for you so you can understand better. We are dropping into a lunge on the left side. So your left foot will be forward, and you're going to take a big step back with your right foot now. And then when you're ready, drop down to that right knee. Good. So if you're someone who uses a blanket, make sure it's underneath your knee. You're going to square the hips forward, so squeeze the thighs together, that same idea, and then shift your body weight forward. Take a look at your left knee. It should be directly above the ankle. Square the hips off, and then inhale, lift up the arms. So just as the other side, you should feel a little bit of a pinch on this left side and like an elongating sensation on the right side. Drop your left hand, reach, wrap it around your waist. Reach your right fingertips all the way up and over, and then start to manipulate your right elbow to the outside of the left leg. If this is enough, absolutely stay. Try to make your way into like a prayer position with your hands. So I wish you could see on the other side, but on the other side, I can get my thumbs into my breastbone here, but here on the left side, my thumbs do not want to leave my armpit. So just to show, goes to show that there are always sides that we favor, and they create imbalances in the body. That's why we make sure we're really strict about working both sides equally. Hold for two more breaths. One more inhale. And then exhale out all the way. Gently unwind yourself. Hands frame the front foot. So making our way into warrior one. So remember, warrior one feet are different from warrior two because we want heel to heel alignment. Makes balancing a little more challenging. So. Curl your right toes into the mat. Come on off your right knee. Take a look behind you. Watch your feet. You're going to spin the right foot down. Your left heel should be directly in front of the right heel. And your toes can be pointing a little bit more forward on the diagonal here. Press firmly through that left big toe. Use your next inhale to lift up for warrior one. So we do want to try to get the hips to square off to the front of your mat. So same idea. Magnetically draw your thighs together. Like there's a piece of paper you do not want to move. Check out your knee. The rule never changes with the front knee. It should always be above your ankle. And you'll know that that's you if you can see your big toe. One more inhale, fill up. Exhale, wrap your hands around your waist. Give it a squeeze. Inhale, step up to the top. Switch it up. Grab your blocks. Pyramid pose on the left side. So same thing. We want hips width to fists in between the feet. Now your left foot will stay forward, and your right foot will take about a 12 to 18 inch step back from the block. Remember, we want that right foot to be directly behind the block so our hips are pointed forward. Wrap your hands around your waist, give it a squeeze. Inhale, roll the shoulders all the way up and back. Take an inhale. As you exhale, lower down, grab hold of your block. So take a minute to make whatever adjustments you need to. If you have to bend your left knee to reach the blocks, I want that left knee straight, so just interlace your fingers on the left knee, above the left knee, not on the knee. Same idea goes if you're down here and you're like, yeah, so what? Adjust the height of your blocks or ditch them completely. And in a perfect yoga world, you create so much flexibility in your hamstrings and your lower back that you can touch your nose to your left shin. Bring your gaze down between your feet to keep the neck nice and safe. We're down here for two more breaths before we launch up into that balancing pose again. One more inhale. Exhale out all the way. Now have a soft bend in the left knee, and you're going to walk your blocks out as far forward as you can before you actually end up lifting off. So that's like a good marker here. Take an inhale. As you exhale, you're going to lift off of that right leg, shift onto your left leg. So same idea here. We don't want the hips lifting up. That's a different pose. 
We want the hips pointing down. If you have a wall behind you or something you can rest that back foot on, totally use it. If not, remember that cue, that piece of paper between your thighs. Squeeze the thighs here. So a lot of activation going on in both glutes. Breathe here. Hold it for five, four, three, two, and one. Bend that left knee. Softly take a step back with the right leg. Walk the blocks back. And then when you feel steady, inhale, lift back up to stand. Nice job. So blocks can come off to the side. We won't really need them. Back to the top of your mat for one more final vinyasa. Then we're on the ground. Inhale, reach up all the way. And then exhale, fold forward. Inhale, hands to shins, flatten out the back. As you exhale, plant your hands, step back to your plank, moving through whatever variation of the vinyasa works well for you or ditching it completely. We're all going to meet in Downward Facing Dog one more time. Final Downward Dog of the day. Let's make one more adjustment together. Bend the knees, rest your belly on your thighs, make contact. Don't lose contact. Lift the hips up. Press your chest back towards your thighs. Feel the shoulders lift and the spine sink. Gaze is in between your feet. Now gently remove the connection from the belly to the thighs. So give yourselves a little body scan. Notice how this final downward dog feels in comparison to the first one. Hopefully a lot better since we did do a lot of hamstring stretching today. Take two more breaths. Breathe in through your nose, out through your nose. One more inhale. And then as you exhale, drop down to your knees. Make your knees as wide as the mat, big toes together, heels apart. Sit on top of your heels and then walk your upper body all the way forward for your extended child's pose. If your forehead does not comfortably touch the mat, place a prop underneath your forehead. Take one more inhale. Exhale out all the way and then gently walk your hands back towards your knees. You're going to shift onto one hip and make your way to lie down flat on your back. Make sure there's no props in your way. And then from here, you're going to draw your knees in towards your chest. Give yourselves a big squeeze. So tuck into this tight ball here. Imagine I were to come to your homes and place like a 50-pound plate on top of your shins. How would that make you tuck even tighter? What I want you to feel is like a little bit of a pinch or an activation in the hip flexors, but an elongating stretch in the lower back. From here, moving into happy baby pose, you're going to stamp your feet toward the ceiling and you're going to grab onto the outer edges of your feet. If the outer edges of your feet are far away, bend your knees till you get there. If they're still really far away, grab your strap, lasso your strap around your feet and pull down. So feeling even more of a lower back and slightly in the groin here. If you have a solid grip, you want to play around, you can gently straighten one leg for your hamstring stretch, then straighten the other. Being careful here, never crossing that boundary between a maximum stretch and pain. One more inhale. And then exhale, hug your knees in towards your chest nice and tight. One more time, give yourselves a squeeze. And then gently lowering into Shavasana. So Shavasana is your final pose, final relaxation. Letting go of any tiny little movements, any final little thoughts. And we're just going to hold down here for about five breaths. Inhale, fill up through your nose, feel your belly rise. Exhale out completely, notice your belly fall. Inhale, fill up. Exhale out and take three more breaths here on your own. Take one more inhale, fill up all the way. Have an extra sip at the top. Exhale out completely. Gently start to come back to a more natural breath. Bring some tiny movements to your fingers and your toes. Reach your arms up all the way overhead and point your toes away, finding a nice long body stretch. And then when you're ready, hugging your knees nice and tight in towards your chest, give yourselves a big squeeze. Gently rock side to side on the tailbone again, giving yourselves that lower back stretch. 
And then when you're ready, your right arm is going to reach over your head. Your bicep will become a pillow as you carefully roll all the way over to your right side. Allow yourselves a moment to adjust. And then when you feel ready, using your left hand as a bit of a kickstand to gently press you back up to a comfortable seated position. And you are all done today, everybody. Thank you so much.